you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. The one constant through all the years has been baseball. This field, this game, is a part of our past. It reminds us of all that once was good and that could be again. Oh, people will come. People will most definitely come. Yes, it is Iowa. The cornfields of Iowa providing the unforgettable setting for one of the greatest baseball movies of all time. A film that continues to resonate with fans and ballplayers more than three decades after it was released. At long last, Major League Baseball at Field of Dreams has finally arrived, featuring the Yankees and White Sox in the first ever regular season big league game held in the Hawkeye State. We certainly hope you're having a great night. Welcome to the DraftKings Yankees pregame. Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry with you. When you can't get to Dyer's Whipville for the Field of Dreams game, Jack, you just create your own Field of Dreams, and that's what we've done here in our Yes studio. But it speaks to the uniqueness of this game. I love this idea, Bob. I love the charm of it, the romance of it, the nostalgia of it. And I have to imagine that Major League Baseball has dozens of ideas that come across its desk every year. As soon as this idea came up, this was not just Field of Dreams. This turns into Fields of Gold for Major League Baseball. You enter Intersect, as you said, one of the best baseball movies ever with an actual game between two teams, the White Sox and the Yankees. First time Iowans have ever been able to see a game in their state. They have minor league baseball there, but they don't have major league baseball. So I think the fact that they were able to bring this together, I think it's bold and I think it's brilliant. Let's take a look at some of the facts from the movie, which came out in 1989. It was released in May of that year based on the book Shoeless Joe by W.P. Kinsella. Three Academy Award nominations, including for Best Picture, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Original Score. Jack, I think it's one of those movies that, that when it comes out and it's the concept and people, they don't flock to the theaters because maybe they just think it's a baseball movie, but there's so many more layers to it than that. It's a baseball movie, but there's so much more going on it, as you said, Bob. It's a movie about life. It's a movie about fathers and sons. It's a movie about pursuing dreams. I forced myself, well, I didn't force myself, I watched it again a couple of days ago. I wanted to make sure I did my research for this show, and there are emotions that tug at you throughout that movie, and the idea of wanting to connect, and everyone calling you crazy because you're tearing down your farm and you're building a baseball field, but I loved the movie the first time I watched it, Bob. I loved it again when I watched it a couple days ago. And of course, the big moment comes at the end of the movie, the father and son playing catch, but really that relates to anybody you might have a special relationship relationship, be it your mom, be it a dad, be it an aunt or uncle that you played catch with and had that special connection with. Yeah, that's the part I think where the emotions catch up with you. And you're right. I said father and son, but I'm glad you mentioned moms. I'm glad you mentioned uncles or a close friend because that is what the Kevin Costner character is seeking at that point. He's hunting down that relationship with his father. And I heard an interview with Kevin Costner recently where he talked about how sometimes there are things that are left unsaid and sometimes there are things things you wish you had said to your loved one at the moment when you had that chance. That game of catch at the end of that movie is the connection between that father and son that had been absent throughout the character's life.